Oh, After uh, Ken Fires here. Just kidding. Going out of our way and helping others 
um, when someone loses something. So a lot of people are lost out there and they're seeking, they're searching, they're searching for love, they're searching, you know, um, <clears throat> um, just for help, for, for guidance, uh, just, to, just a kind word, a friend. And this is what we need to do in verse 2. And if thy brother be not nigh unto thee, or if thou know him not, then thou shalt bring it unto thy own house, and thou shalt, shalt be with thee until thy brother seek after it, and thou shalt restore it to him again. And so here, I mean, I'm using it as a different way, but here we are able to restore something and help uh, a person of need, uh, help someone find something that they have lost. And so we have found it. We know we are blessed, we are saved uh, through Christ, we have a new heart, a new mind, and we can restore it to others, and we have it, and do we give it out, or do we hide it ourselves? Verse 3, in like manner shalt thou do with his ass, and so thou shalt do with his raiment, with all thing, lost things of thy brothers, which he has lost and thou hast found, shalt thou do likewise, thou mayest not hide thyself. And in verse 4, Thou shalt not see thy brother's house or his ox fall down by the way and hide thyself from them. Thou shalt surely help him to lift them up again. And so not hiding ourselves, you know, going out of our way to minister unto people, random people on the street, you know, get, a, get a, out of the um, our fear of failure or fear, fear of people too as well. And just really just, it's not us, it's, it's Christ. And so... And fear of like get, getting denied too as well. I've been denied many times to an outreach. I got discouraged too as well. But it's getting over that because they're not denying us. They're denying Christ. And so just maybe potentially we just get that one soul we've been talking here about in Baltimore. Just getting one soul and just and there's a party in heaven and just, we get one soul we just dance around party. And so um, yeah, and I love that last part when the brother's ox or his. Um, when his ox fa falls down, help his brother, help thy brother. Don't hide themselves, or just don't act like uh, he's not there. And so, lifting up one another when someone falls down, um, helping someone seek uh, that lost thing, and in this case, we can help them find Christ. Maybe it's not like right away. Maybe we build a relationship with them first too, as well, um, which is something I like to do. I like to build a relationship, really uh, see where that person is coming from. And so my challenge is, I just want to challenge you guys to really go out of your way and just help uh, one another, go out to the streets, help the church, help people, uh, bring people into the church, whatever you have to do, you know, be helpful, uh, restore this, and have that kindness of pretty much what you guys have shown to me, just giving me, and thinking about me, praying about me, and just rooting for me on this journey, and uh, going along with me, and so you guys are in my prayers. And I love all of you. Thank you. And, um, yeah, I'll see you guys soon. God bless. Steve. Morning. Steve. It's getting more packed in here. Steve. Oh, sorry. My fast code lights. It's going to be night. There you go. Okay. Can't do like Jesse. <laughs> it fits right what Jesse was talking about. Um, uh, yeah, people are, uh, yes, ma'am, ever learning and ever coming to the knowledge of, of the truth of God. Uh, your, our lives affect others, and if we guard our influence, people of the world. Uh, uh, the world is giving another gospel. Pastor says the, the streets speak, and the, they, they speak loud. And where is our voice? And I was listening to Pastor Stevens, uh, Carl Stevens, Dr. Stevens, who the founder of Greater Grace. And he said that the word leads to a fact. A fact leads to a thought. A thought leads to a truth. A truth leads to a principle. A principle leads to a decision. A decision leads to an action. It all comes to the bottom line is an action. We are here not just for ourselves. We are to come to know our Savior and our Lord. And Pastor Stevens was saying we can become spiritually constipated. You know, we can we can become, you know, blocked by ourselves and by our own, you know, fears. And forget this Corona. It's not, not even an issue no more. It's but it's just the 
our our own. We need to be bold in Christ. And and uh, I was watching Matrix. How many see Matrix? Huh? Said <laughs> yeah. This is this is this is a there's a difference between knowing the path and walking the path. You know, we can know the path, we can know God's word, but walking the path, taking an action, taking a step of faith, knowing that, you know, we this is not just for ourselves. Christ came to give the whole world that we can walk and share the truth that to bring the church, build the build the body of Christ, build the build the church. And there's many, many difficulties in life. I mean, I'm sure there's everyone here has a, a lot of stuff on their plate. We all have stuff on our plate, but we can give our burdens unto the Lord. And who are you yoked up with? You know, what, what is our yoke? You know, we have a, we have our comforter. We have the great Christ, our Lord and Savior, and we can walk and give him our, our junk. And he empowers us to walk boldly. And he gives us utterance and speech and a thought and a prayer and to build our lives. He says, binding, God says to bind the things on this earth and loosening the things that are in heaven, binding the things that are here. He asks us to do these things through prayer, through the fire of the Spirit of the Holy Father, to, to give us boldness, to give us deep prayers, powerful prayers, mm-hmm. prayers of this matrix. We are not ourselves. We are we are in Christ. All things he's given us, not helping us, his own son. He's given us all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus so we could walk in these powerful things wow. of Christ and our Lord. We can call ministering angels. We can call upon our Savior. We can call for redemption and grace. For many, all these wonderful, powerful, amazing gifts through the Spirit of God. So, uh, Lord, thank you for this morning. Thank you for your work. Thank you for the church. Thank you for action. Lord, give us boldness to, to walk in the way you would lead us, Lord, to help others. Yes, Father. Thank you, Christ. Uh, lead this service again, Lord, by your Spirit. Continue to anoint the the pastors and the people here open our ears lord stir our hearts in jesus name amen thank you So, uh, praise God. Good morning, uh, church family. It's um, great just to be up here. It's felt like just so long. Um, you know, and I just, it's its wonderful to be with the body. So let us pray. We'll dig into the word together. If you guys have your Bibles, turn with me to Ephesians 2. Let me get my inner pastor Ken out since Jesse did. <laughs> Let's pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for your amazing love. How you shower us with grace. How you forgive us when we are far away from you. You love us with that everlasting love that never ends, that never fills. That leaves the 99 and chases after us. No, we just thank you, Lord, for your ability to anoint a service, to bless the hearers, to bless the speaker, and to bless your body, Lord. We don't take this lightly because we know that some people come needing you to speak in certain areas of their lives. We just ask that you'll minister freely by your Holy Spirit. Yes. Messages of grace, unconditional love, of positional thinking. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, guys. So if you have your Bibles again, we're in Ephesians chapter 2. It's a familiar verse for many of us, but I want us to take our time and 
and to see how, while we may be totally deprived, you know, we, we can be messed up. We can be sinners, all have sinned and fallen short of the, the glory of God. And yet, greater than our depravity is how we're totally dependent upon God. Like a lot of times we can focus on how sinful we are. But I want us to focus on how faithful God is. So if you have your Bibles, we'll start at the, the first verse. And it says, And you were dead in trespasses and sins, and once you, in which you once walked, following the course of the world, following the prince and the power of the air, the Spirit is now at work in sons of disobedience. <clears throat> so we once walked. That's, that's important for some of us to hear that are struggling with, with sin. It seems like we can overcome it. But the Bible says that we once walked within the sin. We're no longer people or sons of disobedience, although, although the, the Spirit, the power of the air, the devil, Lucifer, would want us to walk in a, in a different identity according to uh, being underneath him, of being his child. You know, but we are purchased. We have been adopted by a far greater father, by a father that would love us unconditionally, unmeritedly, with such an everlasting love. Do you know that you are loved? among whom we once lived in the passions of the flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. Again, this is who we once were. It's important for us to understand today, if we don't understand anything else, that if you have been bought by uh, and redeemed by Jesus Christ, if, if you have received and, and walked, within resurrection power because of this great faith that you have, saying, I, I, I recognize that I'm a sinner. I recognize that I fall short, but I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. This is who you used to be. We're no longer who we used to be. God. We're walking in new life. Yes. How, how, is this, how is this possible that we have this new life in which we can walk in? How is it possible? Verse number four. Like God. We can just pause there. <coughs> Thank God we have bite gods in our life. Where we used to be this way. I used to walk this. I used to be addicted in this area. I used to struggle over here. I used to be timid in this area. I used to be afraid to share my faith. I used to be um, walking over this way and that way and doing this and doing that. But God. I, 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 I may be sorrowful, I may have grief, I may have confusion of my mind, I may be sad, I may be weak, but God. We all need a but God in our lives where God becomes so much bigger and so much greater than our failures, than our sins, than our shortcomings, than our sorrows, than our struggles. We need a God that is bigger. You know, when we're in the valley, in the shadow of death, we need a God that's right there walking with us, that will never leave us nor forsake us. We need to feel the comfort of his rod and his staff, knowing that he's there for his child and who he loves. And a lot of times as children of God, we feel like when, when that wrath or that staff is close to us, that, that we are not loved by God. But it's, it's, it's a sign that God legitimately loves you as a child. It's great to have God correct us. It's great to have God convicting us. It's great to have God speaking into our lives and saying, why are you walking this way? Because you're no longer that. That's who you once were. Verse number four, but God, do you know his character? Have you experienced his love? But God, being rich of mercy, Brand new mercy every single morning. He's so rich in it. He's always given it. He's always forgiven. He's always given us something that we do not deserve. He's always not allowing us to pay the punishment that we deserve. He's always forgiven. He's rich in this mercy. Always given. There's no situation in your life where God will not show mercy. 
no situation. There's nothing that you can do. There's nothing that would ever stop God from wanting to love you, from wanting to reach out to you with this rich, rich mercy because of the great, great love in which he loves us. Wow. It's a love that will love you first, even before you love him. It's a love that will love you while you are yet sinners, while you're children of disobedience. It's a love that all it requires is total dependence. Total dependence. It's a love that says, God, I can't even love you the way that you love me. I recognize my inability. Like a lot of times we, we mess with Peter a lot of times. And, and when God says, do you love me? And he says, I really like you a lot. And he says, do you love me? And he's like, you know, you're my best homeboy. Do you, do you love me? You know, you know, we are going to really like anywhere you go, whatever you do, Jesus. I he's like, no, but do you love me? And, and a lot of times that's the way that it is with our life because we don't have the capacity to love God the way that he loves us. We're always looking for him to scratch our back. We're always looking for the, the next blessing. We're always looking for God to do something in our behalf. It's always God, give, give, give. And he's a God that's rich in mercy and always willing to give. And we're always taking that. But, and it's amazing because he's always given that. But I love how Jesse like, convicted us in a very loving way that it's not just about receiving when your cup has been filled up it's about giving Praise God. we should mirror our father of this great love and this rich mercy even when we were dead in trespasses he made us alive we're no longer dead we're alive in Christ together with Christ by grace you we us have been saved and raised up with him and seated us in him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Like, did you just get that? God wants to shower us with blessings. He's going to shower you with immeasurable blessings that you'll never ever be able to 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 give him something that will ever make up for all that he's given you he gave us his only begotten son he gives us mercy every single day he gives us grace he gives us a position that is in Christ Jesus do you understand your position in Christ you're in heavenly places you're above your struggles you're above your sin you're above your failures you're above everything because you have been made alive in Christ Jesus. You have been raised up. There's no longer a need for you to feel like you're defeated. You have been elevated with resurrection power. The same power that rose Jesus from the grave is living inside of us. Wow, that's 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 mountain moving power. That, that's, a, that's the type of faith and the type of power that is able to go to lost and dying people and share a word of faith and someone turn around in a minute and nothing else matters because God loved me. Like we have opportunities to tell people and get people to understand that we have a God that loves us so deeply and so immeasurably and wants to bless us richly and and and. All we have to give them the opportunity to do is just say, just let God love you. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. Wow. Amen. Verse number eight. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is a gift of God. After talking about how in a natural response of God's riches and his mercy and his love that they will produce this amazing work within us it's important to know that the work is not what saves us it's the gift that saves us for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son our god is a god that gives He's the God that gives, and, and sometimes we want to say, like, God, out of this, I want to give you great uh, thanksgiving and gratitude. But what could we actually give to God who gave us his best? Yeah. Uh, like, like, seriously, like, I'm, I'm going to spend more time with you. I'm going to read the word. Like, like, I'm sorry. Like, I love my wife. We've been married for 11 years, you know, and, and I, I just... 
you know, three kids, amazing time together. Um, every single day is such an amazing blessing. And I want to be with her. But man, how, how do we take it and, and treat it like with God that, wow, I'm giving you church on Sunday. Yeah. Like, do we actually love God? Like, Because if you love somebody, you want to be with that person. Like, so every breath that I'm awake, like, like, like my wife's like, you're just saying that because you're married to me. And it's like, no, I always want to be in a position where I'm loving on her. Like, shouldn't we always want to be in a position where we're worshiping God or praising to him day and night? And, and there's always a Thanksgiving that is on our lips. Verse number nine, not a result of works. So that no one may boast. We're saved by grace through faith. This is a gift. It's not by your works. I can't say, look what I did to get saved. Or, or I can't say um, that God gave me a second chance. God does not uh, save us to give us a second chance and then say, okay, um, George, the rest is up to you. You, you got the rest of it. I, I saved you. I pulled you out like that oxen. You know, maybe, maybe we would look at the oxen. We would help our neighbor. Okay, lift him up. Okay, I'm done with this. Like, I don't care that he has a broken leg, but you find a way to get him home. At least I did my merit. I did what God said. Like, but we never go beyond that, you know, and a lot of times, you know, we just go for for something. And, and, and this is the thing. As we talk about works, and as we get ready for this next chapter to begin to look at this, it's very important that we understand what grace is. Grace is a gift. It's not a give back. Grace is a gift. It's not a give back. It, it, you know, a give back is that, that Myra gives me a, a Christmas present. So I, I, I look in my car or I look somewhere. I, I try to look in my closet and see what I can give her back because I didn't shop for her. You know, um, and I'm just like, I want to show her gratitude for what she gave me. So it's like a give back, like where you just try to look in the, the bag. And you, we all have that closet, right? A portion of our closet for give backs, you know, um, you know, and it, that grace is not a give back. Grace, like, like what can you give back? Like there are no give backs that we're able to give Christ. Um, so it's, it's nothing that I can boast on and be like, you know, or try to outdo. You know, the, the people that try to outdo someone. So they get like the Christmas gift and they, they maybe snoop around and they see what their, their boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife got them. And then they try to outdo them. You know, it's, it's not that. It's not that. It's, it's nothing that you can boast on and see. Look how I, you know, all right. But look what it is. Something amazing. When we begin to see what our workmanship is, it's, it's a response of grace. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a capacity that God has given you to, to work with them. It's something that he has laid out, that he has formed, that he has done. So look at verse number 10 as I wrap up. For we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus for good works, which he has prepared beforehand that we shall walk in them. All right. Have you ever had one of those teachers that really didn't teach? <laughs> and, and they felt guilty for it, I think. I don't know. They felt guilty, right? Like, so teach the whole semester, but the week before the final exam, they give you the test. They give you the test before the final exam. They say, here, take this and do this and study for this and write in all the answers and, and do all this. And they even give you like the cheat sheet for the answers. You guys have that? Like yeah. public school students, you all been here. For those that were maybe raised in, 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 like my wife raised in Haiti or someone that went to public school, you may not understand the nuns, they didn't do this. But for us public school students, we had teachers that gave us the answer to the test before the test. And, and, and they said, okay, just study on this. So you had all the answers. It was done beforehand. So before the day of the actual test, you got the answers to the test. 
And if you're smart enough, you bring that cheat sheet to you because when the teacher said, okay, um, let's turn in the test, you already had it done and you gave it to them. And then you're able to leave and you took off for the rest of the day. And, and it was great. You know, um, it was awesome. It was something that was done beforehand. And you got the A because you got the answers and everything was complete, right? But you learn nothing, but like hopefully we learn something. It's not the good, it's not like an exact example, okay? So, but we have this test, this work that was was done beforehand, a finished work, right? We had Jesus Christ dying in our stead, dying in our place. He who knew no sin became sin, so that we could be the righteousness of God. So so God has made us right even when we are wrong. Because he did the work before us. He completed. He did the work, right? This is amazing. When you understand that God uh, telling us to, to go out and sow win, hey, that's, that's grace. I'm telling you to sow win because I'm going to give you a soul which I prepared beforehand because I predestined this. I'm so thankful and, and please, my sister Ruth, I love you so much. I've been praying for you. But God gave us a sign, a hold up that was going to attract her to come to the church and for the last week sister Ruth has been coming here like this is amazing all because we held up a sign like do you understand that you could be used by God to 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 be able to attract people and it's not even you doing it it's God that has done it beforehand so 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 I can make some roast capoyo for Pastor Shabelli, and as I'm making that roast capoyo for him, uh, like it has already, or that pork, that roast pork, or whatever I'm making, it's something that God has done beforehand. So I'm putting the fruits of the spirit inside of every single meal, and I'm not just cooking with ingredients; I'm cooking with love. Oh, yes. the oh, ingredient. 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 Right, right. So, so it's it's pretty amazing because a lot of times within the church we look at and we say, look at the the pastor and the teacher, and I want to be like him. But what I'm trying to say is, for the whole entire body, God has prepared works ahead of time for you. And it's not always in the church. It may be um, my brother Steve laying, laying tile or carpet or doing different things within his normal job. And as you do it for the glory of God, as you do it unto him, people are... are, are, are when I look at the, 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 the tile that, that Steve laid, I'm like, wow, this is like just so amazing. Like, like, and, and we can do different things, but it's how are we doing it? As I conclude, there was three guys that were laying um a fence they were building laying brick and they're building brick and they're doing all these things and a guy goes into him and he says what are you doing and he says can't you see I'm, I'm i'm laying brick it's like the most boring this is jaws of ever this is like all that i do with all of my life this is all that i ever have an opportunity to do brick at the brick at the brick at the brick and then he goes to the second guy that's also laying brick and he says hey what are you guys doing he's like hey we're, we're building a wall and this wall is going to be tall and it's going to be strong and it's going to be uh, fortitude. It's going to be a, a great wall. I'm taking my time. I'm doing the best that I can with all my strength. And then the next guy, he asks the third guy and he says, what are you building? He says, I'm building a cathedral. I'm building a cathedral. And inside of this, as we get done, the very presence of God will meet his people within this. And people's lives will be changed and restored. Like I get this opportunity what are we, how is our focus when we get to work? When we get the opportunity, like heard Christy say the other day, we get to serve. And the service is really not service, although God will one day say, well done, my good and faithful servant. The servant is the most highest calling that could ever be because Jesus said, if you, who, if you want to be the greatest of all, what must you do? You must serve. You must serve. Serve. We can serve with our prayers. We can serve with, with opportunities to, to do whatever in our, in our houses, within our ministry, within this church, within the body, within the community. We have opportunities to serve. And the best thing is it's been raked. Christ is going to give us the grace to get the best outcome ever. Let us pray. Thanks. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love, your mercy, grace. We ask that you anoint the rest of this message. In Jesus' name, amen.
competition. <clears throat> Wonderful word, huh? That was amazing. That was amazing. Um, it's so good. That's so good to think about that, you know. Um, let's uh, let's stand up and stretch. Uh, I'm not going to go long, just a couple points, okay? So stand up first. Yeah, really, where are you going to go? Where are you going to go? You going to go back in your home and shut the door and watch the news and get all depressed and you, you want that? No. Might as well just stay here. Everybody standing? All right, how about lift your hand up? Yeah, stretch. Lift the other one up. Now say, praise you, Lord. There you go. That's your stretch. Amen. Amen. Hey, Facebook. How you guys doing? That was a great word. Stretch, Facebook. Yes. Get on up. I see Winnie. I see Hannah. I see uh, Chrissy's mom. Stephanie. Praying for you guys. Amen. Yes. All right. So we have Pastor Shabelli next week, right? And um, so 1030 and invite somebody. And then we're also going to have our very first wrap since this whole COVID thing. So we will have some food. There. And then uh, 6 o'clock, uh, we'll be at Mirtha's for those who can come. Um, um, if you are, though, I need to know. We definitely need to know. Um, Cindy, do I got to take this? More like a mouth count. How many mouths is Exactly. <laughs> Should I do this? Okay, hang on, please. So, all right, you guys can be seated. Um, wow. <laughs> you know, Saturday's Palm Beach. Yeah, Saturday's Palm Beach. You, you know, uh, yeah, 7 o'clock, hopefully earlier, we'll see. Listen, um, there's been some great portions already this morning. That, I mean, it's been amazing. I mean, um, to be used by God, how Jesse was talking. And he is just so grateful. He's praised for you guys. He's looking forward to seeing you guys too. So, uh, But he's having a great time in Bible college. And everything that God does and leads them is, is just, you know, like uh, Pastor Keith was saying, you know, it, it, he's now starting to learn it's never by coincidence that God is setting up these divine appointments in his life. And, and, and they're just not an introduction to meet somebody which is wonderful, by the way. Yes. Never take that for granted that, oh, I just met them. That's a wonderful thing that you get to meet somebody. Mm -hmm. But now to invest in them, that they respond to God and it becomes an eternal process, that's beyond us. That is way, way beyond us. And God, like Pastor Keith said, that's because we're his workmanship. Mm -hmm. No other reason, no other purpose. You are, you are, but God, it's because God is using you. It's not because you have anything to bring, you know, to the table. And that's amazing. You are a vessel, a vessel of honor, right? We want to be vessels of honor. Heavenly Father, we just praise you. and We thank you, Father, for this time and bless these uh, remaining thoughts to us, Lord. Um, we just bless you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Uh, amen and amen. A um, couple things. So. Uh, we what what did we learn from these guys? Um, you can go back and watch Jesse's again and even here. But um, Steve said, you know, uh, you know, and, and that was is so good. But also that we do have a lot of junk in our trunk, right? No, it's not how we. Well, we have a lot of junk. We have a lot of junk. We carry on a lot of junk, right? And that's that's all from the old nature. You know, and the thing about it is we don't think we can do anything about it. That it's a permanent within us. And and because it's permanent within us, it affects us. It affects us. The old sin nature affects us greatly. Greatly. And then and then Keith went out and said, and, and I love that part, that you once walked. Right? You once walked in that way. And, and what that means is so profound. Because the but God means you once walked, but you don't walk that way no more. Amen. So why do we? 
Why do we stay? Remember last week? Because this is a, con a continuation from last week. Last week we talked about our position that how does God overcome our position in Adam? And, and this is the same thing about it. Because our old nature, old sin is still affecting us greatly. And God is saying, no, you are a new creation. Start thinking in the new and forgetting the things that are behind because they will destroy your Christian walk. You can be going good and all of a sudden, boom, and it hits you. And you fall in this, in this depression and you start to feel sorry for yourself and you start to have guilt upon yourself. And now you got this worry and this condemnation. And guess what? Satan is laughing because now you can't even take a step of faith. You have been hindered. You have been wounded again by not by anything else, but the old sin nature that tags along and hangs out with you every once in a while because you need to feel comforted by it. Romans chapter six, please. <laughs> You know what? In this chapter, it's amazing, by the way. And we're not going to teach the whole thing, so I'm not giving it justice, but I'm going to pick out a couple of areas because of time here. 14 times. How many? 14. 14 times in Romans 6 has the word death. Of, of relaying to we, were, we are dead. I mean, what a point he's bringing across here. Yeah. That death has already been done in your life. And the only way that the old sin nature can resurrect itself if it's not dead. Wow. And it can live very strong in your life. And it can bring a lot of problems. And then you'll blame it on, oh, uh, I don't want to do the things that I, you know. You'll use that one verse over and over and over to, to try to satisfy what you're living in. But it's because we don't know that it's dead. And we have, and, and behind all that death of the old sin nature, behind all that is the old sin nature of even human good. It hides back there. Well, I'm a good person. <laughs> you know, I'm so good. But, you know, But if God would deal with your human goodness, then he would have to make a provision for death. And 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 um, and 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 you you would you would be able to defend yourself. But it can't be that way. How does God overcome? How does God overcome our the old sin nature by giving us, like Keith was saying, by giving us a new position in Christ. Amen. And that's where, that is more real than feeling and touching your own skin now. The position in Christ, our position in Christ. So Romans deals with this heavily. And he uses you cannot read and go through, and, and Romans 6 is loaded, but you cannot do a Bible study on it without knowing three words. And the word is knowing. They're all different. L let me get this. Let me just read one and two, and then, then this will make sense here. So chapter 6, verse 1, and, and this is in... Um, this is in, in front of Romans 5.21, okay, right? Which, which is before everything that talks about justification in Romans 5.1, which also is before chapter 4, which talks about that righteousness has been imputed into you. So you have to know that, that, that projection there and how that's working, Right? So it says, what shall we say 
shall we continue in sin that grace abounds? And this has been going on since Paul's day. Well, you grace people are just giving people a license to sin. And it says right there, God forbid. And, and these people that say that are very elementary in their thinking. They don't know grace. Grace deals with our sin, but it also gives us the ability to be used by God going forward. And, and, and it's our life of going forward. And we're talking like Steve and, and keep uh, and even Jesse talks about this newness of life. We're talking about living in the newness of life. The newness of life has no life if we are still living in our old sin nature. There is no newness because you're preferring the old. You're, you're choosing with your free volition to live in your old sin nature. And it's supposed to be dead, but you haven't realized it yet. Verse 2, certainly not. And here it is. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Now, this is amazing because Paul is saying, you know, yeah, you have an old sin nature, but guess what? It's dead. You know? And, and it's not that we don't sin, but if we do, we can confess our sins because he is faithful and just to forgive us. But there's great victory in knowing, in knowing that how do we live? If we have died, how do we live any longer in it? And why do we continue to live in it? And why do we continue to give excuses in it? And why do we continue? effects of it. Sin is not your friend, folks. Let it die. Let it die so life can come from you. Others need to see the life in you, Christ in you. They don't need to see your old, your old sin nature. The flesh is attracted to your flesh in the old sin nature, but that's not life. This is why, women, you don't want a man who's lustfully attracted to you, but that's drawn to Christ in you. Okay, so there's three no's, K-N-O-W, to know something. There's three different ones here, and they all mean something different. It's hard to go through Romans 6 without understanding the differences of these words. In the English, it's the word no. It's to understand. That's not the meaning here. And if you take that meaning when you read this, you will lose yourself in Romans 6 very quickly. It will not make sense. There'll be no victory. There'll be no newness of life in verse 4. Because that's where this wants to bring us to, the newness of life, right? This is the newness of life, the spiritual life. It's where the spirit leads and the soul responds. And then I learn to walk in the spirit because I've got this brand new life. This is the creation. This is the new creation right here. So the first one, the first no is found in verse 3. So we've got, and I'm just going over this. You guys know how to read. You can read the whole chapter later, right? If you have problems, call us. So we're going to go over 3, 6, and 9 is where this word is found. Matter of fact, it is in another area in, uh, um, uh, where is it, 16, but it, it, it's also one of these here, okay? So you guys with me? Yes. Still focusing? Yes. Still into it? Okay, yes. verse 3, right? Or do you not know, there's the first one, that as many as were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death. Don't you know this? This is what he's saying. Don't we know this? And this here, this word know, it means a lack, of, a lack of knowledge and it's living in error. So you don't know because you're living in error and you're living without knowledge. 
Matter of fact, the Amplified says that this word no is you are ignorant. Hey, don't look at me. I'm not calling you that. I mean, this is this is the Holy Spirit calling you ignorant. <laughs> this is Paul writing what the Holy Spirit has put. Up. So, yeah, he says you're living in ignorance because you don't know that you were baptized into Christ's death. You're baptized into Christ's death. Are you ignorant? In other words, it is abs it's absurd for you to allow for you to live in sin. How about that one? That's what this meaning is. I mean, but well, I got this old nature, Pastor. It's dead. It's dead. We don't understand the death part. If something's dead, you don't go and say, hey. Um, my, uh, my buddy just died last week, but we're going out next week. I'm going to go pick him up, sit him right in that car, you know, come on. exactly. Same thing. It's absurd to persist in sin and we don't give excuse to the sin. A couple other key words here that as many as us were baptized, baptized into it's an inward union. It has nothing to do with what type of baptism this is. It's an inward union that is not something that is taking place during this baptism. It's something that has already taken place. So you're just realizing, wow, I've already been baptized. When we accept Christ, we are baptized. The Holy Spirit seals us. There's an hour baptism, which is water, which is also required, which is, this, this is the same thing. It's also the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you know? So this is just realizing that I now, and this is what water baptism is, it's an outward expression of this event that I am now, that I have taken union with Christ. So not something that is taking place because of what's happening now, but something that is already done. Do you understand that? Amen. You get that part? Yeah. Okay, so that's that baptism. And then another one then, um, into his death means as he died to sin, we have died to sin. This is why sin has no power over us no more. Death and sin has no power over the over the believer because of these events okay you got it yeah. that's one right yeah. second one verse six knowing there it is right in the beginning knowing this and he tells you three things that you should know number one that the old man was crucified with him that the body of sin may be done away with or destroyed, right? And that we shall no longer be slaves to sin. This word knowing is gnosko, and, and it means this. Not alone this knowing is an act, but it's also experiencing it. So this, this is an act, and you experience that act. This is gnosko. This is action. It's gnosis, ep, like epinosis. But it's but it's active. It's an, an active way of knowing. It's just not knowing as knowledge. It's now I'm living it. So this is a this is a lot stronger. And the, and the three things, right? The three things that the old man was crucified, that sin might be done away with, and that we are no longer a slave to sin. A lot of us can believe and act in the first two, but then all, all of a sudden I'm a slave to sin again. So that means we're not really knowing it because we're not acting it and we're not living it. This is experiential for the believer because of what Christ did and I am in Christ, this has taken place for me. Now I live in the results. I don't deny it. And, and, and I don't not, I'm not going to live in error. I, I'm not not knowing it. I know this thing. I know what Christ did. 
So we take all of these. We don't, we don't separate these three. We live in the experience of all of them. Victory over the old sin nature. Victory because who we are in Christ. Not in my own works. I can't do any of this. It has nothing to do with me. This is why the believer that wants to work their way into heaven falls so short and becomes so disappointed. Like Keith was saying, Pastor Keith was saying, that uh, grace is a gift. It's a gift. It's already been done for you. The answers have already been provided. You cheater you. You've already <laughs> sinned. So even though we learn one kind of, yeah, but in the results of Christ. We live in the results of Christ, okay? Because he nailed it to a cross. Nailed all of our sins to a cross. Either he dealt with that sin that so easily affects us and besieges us, or it's still for us to deal with. And, and how do we deal with our sins? Praying more, giving more, doing this more. Your whole religion from grace is now turned into works. Third one, verse 9. Knowing, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. There's no more sacrifice for sin, by the way. So this you better get in you or sin will dominate you and you will be living in the effects of that. And this is what we're talking about, getting great victory over something that we, in uh, Ephesians 2, at, once we walked according to the course of this world with. Complete blindness by, by the, the God of this world in 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4 who blinded our minds and our thinking, gave us no ability to even serve a living God. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. It's been dealt with. This is thinking in our new position, not in the old. We must change the way we know things and the way we think. So this word here, knowing, is this is to perceive things with our outward senses. Uh, this is really um, looking at things according to sight. This knowing. I see it and I know it is, is how, this, how this is written in the original Greek. So, um, and Paul did know that Christ was raised from the dead, and he dies no more. And we, we need to know that by what we see and what we experience. So these three amazing things. This is what allows us here. This is what allows us. Um, and, and let's turn and close here. Second Corinthians. And I've been going to this a lot this year. And I just love this verse. Second Corinthians 5, 17. Mm -hmm. So therefore, if anyone is in Christ, yeah, he, uh, I'm reading New King James. This King James, same thing. Be in Christ, but um, but it's um, if anyone is in Christ, and that is, and or oh, and, and or be in is is um, is is another work that's not of you. It, it's the word, it's, it means it's you've been engrafted in. You've been engrafted into Christ. That's such a good word. And then it says, old things have, have passed away. Behold, all things have become new.
So the old man has passed away. The old sin nature. And all things are now new. Can we learn to live in that newness that this speaks about? The new creation that dwells within man. Our old nature is passing away. The new creation within us is growing new. And I tried to think of that word uh, Tuesday, but it, uh, it's refurbish. It's not that we're refurbished. We're brand new. He doesn't take some of your old good things of your life and combine some of his things to it to form something different. No, the new creation, when you become born again and accept Christ, all things are now new. You don't have to live in the effects of the old which deals with condemnation, which deals with guilt or shame. You know, people live in all these fears and phobias and anxieties. It's all part of the old creation. And it's because they don't know. It's all about what we know. And, and, and in, in, in first, uh, first John 5, uh, 12 and 13, he says, these things are written that you may no. God wants you to know. And this is how we change our thinking and our thought process and what we think upon. Think on things above. Not things on this world. We get ourselves, we get our minds in the word of God. And the transformation comes following that. Because all things are new. The Holy Spirit, who is worried about the new creation, is the one who starts to teach you and speak to you personally and intimately as we're in our books. Now, one, one word here, too, and, and we're done. It says, behold, all things are new. The word behold means look, look, things are new. Things are new. Look. Look to the thing that is, you know, we are to look unto Jesus because that is all new. When we look unto Christ, it's like our problems and our situations of our day like fade away because I've, I've trained my thinking to look upon something else. I'm going to look on this. I'm going to look upon Christ because that's going to be something new in my life that I need now. I'm looking at things physically, and I don't like what I'm seeing right now. This is causing me sorrow. This is sad. This is depressed. Depressed. You know, I, I oh, I look at these bills. I'm worrying. I'm in anxiety. I look at my family. They've got all these problems. I, I feel for them. My heart's going out for them. Look unto Christ. Amen. Because then you've got a new answer. Amen. You've got an answer for the ones that are in that position. Behold, go ahead and look. Look unto this. Remember, when Jesus Christ went to be baptized by John in, 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 um, in uh, John chapter, uh, chapter 1, I think verse 28, 29, somewhere in there, Jesus, uh, John is baptizing, and Jesus goes unto John. And what does John say? Remember, prior, he says, listen, are, they said, are you the Christ? Are you the one we're to look for? No, I'm not. Well, who are you? I'm, I'm just, you know, I can't even, I can't even loosen his, his, his sandals. I'm not even worthy to do that. I'm just a messenger that goes before the one that's coming. And then Jesus comes, and what does John say? Behold. Behold. Look. Look here. Look, gaze upon the one who's got life. Look upon the one that has life for you. And, and he says, behold the Lamb of God. He didn't say, behold, look at the lion of the tribe of Judah who's going to deliver us. But no, look to the Lamb. Look to the one that's going to sacrifice for your sins so that you don't have to live in the effects of that sin. 
You can have victory over death and sin in your life. If not, it would not be written here. I write these things that you may know. That you may live in victory. That you can be a conqueror. That you can live above all this. We look. We look. Behold. Behold Christ. We look to the Lamb. Behold. The new has come. The new has come. It says, all things have become new. Well, the new has come. The new has come. Are you going to still live in the old? Or through your choice just today, start to live in the new. Have our mind completely changed. This is victory, folks. Yeah. This is victory over sin. This is victory over areas of our lives. And you know what? It, when, if we do and when we do sin, we have an advocate. We have somebody we can go to immediately that restores that fellowship. But we need to behold the Lamb. We need to behold the Lamb. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We thank you for this amazing love, this great, great victory, this newness of life this newness of life, this victory that we have over sin and death. Sin and death, victory. God is so good. God is so good today. Don't live in your past. Don't live in your results of, of your bad choices and bad decisions. Start living for God now. Live in the newness of life now. Old things are past. They're gone. There's nothing you can do about what you did last night, last week, last month, last year. But you know what? Right now, right now, you can start looking and beholding all that is new. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you. Just watch over us this week. Lord, continue to build us up and edify us in your most holy word. Bless the offering those that can go online and, and give, uh, um, www.ggcmiami.com in the upper right-hand corner. Give to the ministry. If God is putting on your heart, give to the ministry. We thank you. And remember, Pastor Shabelli next week. This is going to be amazing. You're going to have a great time. This is going to be really, really fun. So, uh, Lord, let us have a wonderful week as we, um, as we have now come in to hear your word and now we go out to share the life of Christ. Freely as you have received, freely give. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Bless this closing song in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Take this.